Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mimeo webinar series. Uh, my name is Paget Heatherington, and I'm from Mimeo, and I would like to welcome all of you to today's webinar. Before we begin, I want to do a, re a really quick sound check. So the way we do that is we ask you to just go ahead and push the smiley face icon or make a smiley face in your chat panel um, just so that we're sure people can hear us. So if, so if somebody could do that, uh, that would be great. Great. Okay. Thanks um, for letting us know that you can hear us. So we're going to get started. So in this webinar, we are going to show you some of the latest and greatest features of our newly released Mimeo Studio 11 classroom software, as well as our new Mimeo mobile app. Um, our Mimeo mobile app and our software now include support for both Apple and Android devices and phones. Um, we will be um, having Travis Rink present this webinar for us. Um, the webinar is titled, What's New with Mimeo Studio and Mimeo Mobile? So before I get started, I just want to give a brief introduction of Travis. Uh, Travis has been with Mimeo for quite some time. He's our educator advocacy leader, and he manages Mimeo's global training programs. Prior to the, his time at Mimeo, Travis spent 16 years in a high school setting teaching chemistry and a range of other science courses. While Travis was in the classroom, he was introduced to the possibilities of what the Mimeo products could do for educators and students alike. And from that, decided to pursue um, further his career and his passion with educators with the Mimeo training programs. And Travis holds a bachelor's of, Bachelor of Science in secondary education from Kansas State University, as well as a master's in Curriculum and Instruction and Educational Leadership and Administration from Wichita State University. So um, he's a great resource, and I'm really pleased that he's able to present um, what's new with Mimeo Studio and Mimeo Mobile to all of you today. Um, but before I turn it over to Travis, I just want to cover a few quick housekeeping items. So each of you should see on the left sidebar of the presentation window um, a chat window. Um, so throughout this morning's presentation, if you have any questions, all you have to do is type in that window and we will see and everyone will see your questions. Our plan is either we will answer those questions um, at the time you ask them if they're really quick and easy, or um, what we'll do is we'll actually address your questions during the question and answer session that we will conduct as soon as um, Travis has completed his, um, his short presentation on the new features of our products. And then within about 24 hours of wrapping up the webinar, we're going to send out an email to all of you that will contain a link to the recording of the, this webinar as well as all of the questions that were posed with the appropriate answers so that um, you can read through those at your leisure. So don't worry if there's some questions that you felt like you wanted more information on. We will make sure that all the questions are answered in that document. Um, as part of that email, you will also have a link um, that will allow you to look at the presentation on demand. So, Without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Travis, and I'll be joining all of you again uh, after Travis for the questions and answers. So, Travis, your turn. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Patrick, and welcome to everybody that's uh, joined us this morning for What's New with Mimeo Studio and Mimeo Mobile. And just like the title shows, we're going to be showing you uh, some of the new things and new features that are that are possible within the Mimeo Studio 11 as well as uh, Mimeo Mobile. So. Uh, let's make sure let me close a few things here so we don't get distracted. So let's get in with this. And again, this is being recorded, so uh, if you need to refer back to this later, you should be able to do that. So here's a, the overview of today's session. So I'm going to show you how to get the newest version of Mimeo Studio, which is Mimeo Studio 11, as well as Mimeo Mobile, which as Patrick mentioned, is available on both platforms, both the uh, Apple family, as well as Android family, as well as uh, you know, tablets and phones. So some of the new features that are enabled within Mimeo Studio 11 is even better PowerPoint abilities to import. And I'll show you some 
you, if you weren't already familiar with the, the ability of Mendo Studio to import things you already have, I'm going to show you some of that, but also the, the beautiful aspects of importing PowerPoints. Uh, an, an, another great feature that I found, and it has so many educational ramifications, is being able to add your own customized animations to, to, to your lesson files, which engages those kiddos and, and does, does so much more. So, uh, enhanced collaboration, I'll be showing you how you can deploy your mobile devices that you might already have, whether uh, through EYOD initiatives or uh, school initiatives, and get those kids involved uh, collaboratively. Uh, another exciting feature is the uh, ability to do open response assessments, and I'll talk more about that using your mobile devices. And then, as Patrick mentioned, uh, throughout the session, uh, don't hesitate to throw questions there in the, uh, the left side chat window. And uh, we'll address those either during the session, but specifically at the end during a Q&A. So without further ado, let's move on and start going through uh, some of this. So again, if you're not uh, too familiar with, uh, with Minio, or even if you are an old pro, uh, you can always download the latest version of the software uh, at Minio.com. So uh, you can easily check what version you have. I'll do this just real quick. I like to make sure teachers know. Uh, because sometimes you're, you're used to seeing that little pop-up balloon saying there's a new version available. Uh, that is currently disabled. So uh, I've run into a lot, quite a few teachers that haven't realized that the newest version is out there. So you can always check what version you have by coming up here to the Help menu, come down to About Mimeo Studio, and then you can, you can see what you have going on there. So uh, in fact, I just worked with a teacher this morning that had version 9.12 still. So there are a couple versions behind. So. Uh, so make sure you are always running the latest version. That will make sure that you have uh, everything working all kosher with your devices. So uh, the latest version should be 11.0. So if you don't have that, uh, simply go out to menu.com, click on the support tab at the top, and then you can download uh, the latest version for whatever platform you have, whether that's Windows, Mac, or even Linux. Uh, save that install file right on your computer, and then install it. It'll update the version you have, and you're you're in it. So uh, of course, that automatically activates with any uh, Mimeo products that you already have connected to your computer, such as a Mimeo Teach or Mimeo Vote or any of those devices. If you don't have any Mimeo products, and maybe you're just wanting to you know, feel the waters out and, and see what this Mimeo stuff is about, you can evaluate the full version of Mimeo Studio for 30 days. And you'll do that in the same area right up here under the Help once it's installed. Uh, then you can, there'll be a button to actually you click on, but if you have actually got into the software, you'll be able to come right back here to about Mimeo Studio, and these buttons right here that I'm pointing at will be enabled, and you can actually evaluate and enter into a 30-day 30 uh, day trial period. So you'll have full access to everything. So definitely encourage you to check that out and make sure that you are running the latest version of the software. So it has some fantastic things that I'm going to be showing you uh, here in just a little bit. So let's move over to the Mimeo mobile side. I'm very excited about the Mimeo mobile app. Uh, when this uh, was on the drawing board uh, a few years ago and we finally were able to bring it out, it's so exciting and it's, it's even more exciting, I think, to work with teachers to show them the possibilities. You know, mobile devices, iPads and whatnot, those are the, the big thing in education now. And, and uh, I think this mobile app gives you the leverage, whether you're a teacher, an administrator, uh, you know, to really leverage that technology that you've invested in into your into your school, into your classroom for actual student learning, rather than trying to figure out ways to use these devices. You know, what games can you play or whatever? You can do so much with this mini mobile application. So, again, how to download it? Uh, it uh, this is a separate download. It does not install with the mini studio software, and uh, it is a free download. You can visit the app, uh, app store uh, from Apple, or if you're an Android user. You can use the uh, Google Play Store. Simply search for Menu Mobile. You can download that, and it, it can be installed on every single device you have, whether it's a tablet or a mobile phone, a smartphone. Uh, you can evaluate that version for 30 days also and have full access to that. So again, you would have to have uh, the Menu Studio. See, Menu Mobile works with Menu Studio. So your Menu Studio would have to be activated in order for you to be able to use the Menu Mobile app. So, but, uh, you can definitely evaluate the full version for 30 days, and then if you decide, hey, this is something that I do want, uh, although the app itself is free for every single device you use in your, in your classroom or your school, uh, the teacher computer that is, is, is manipulating that uh, Mimeo mobile app through its, the computer, you would have to purchase the, uh, at least a classroom teacher license that would enable it for every single device. 
uh, that those functions would not be enabled uh, until you do that. So, and as you can see down here at the bottom, uh, hopefully the supporting devices are you know do include the range of uh, mobile devices that are out there. You know, iPad 2 and higher, the Mini, uh, iPad, iPod Touches, uh, iPhones, of course, and then all the Android devices. So. Uh, let me click on this, and this is just a teaser for one of the animations that are now possible if that comes across in the uh, recording a little bit. But, uh, re but uh, you know, connecting to the Mimeo mobile app is super, super simple. In fact, let me zoom in on just this part of the graph that I want to show you. The way our software engineers have designed this, it's, it's very effortless on the teacher as well as student's uh, standpoint to connect. And, and the way it works is each of the student mobile devices, once that app is installed, it simply connects to the teacher computer using your Wi-Fi signal that you probably already have in your school. So if you, you know, that's, that's the mechanism that it, 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 it's able to connect through uh, Wi-Fi. So uh, all of those student devices can connect uh, right to the teacher computer. So how do they connect? Well, it's super, super simple. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail here, but uh, first you would have to connect the teacher mobile device if you had one to the computer. And then once you have that, we would open up a connection screen, which you can kind of see a screenshot here as a teacher. You would open up a window within the software, and you see what we call a QR code. Now, QR codes are some of the latest rage. Uh, there's so many ways you can use QR codes in the classroom, it's unbelievable, but that's another topic. So um, when you open that window up, your students then on their mobile devices would uh, open up Mimi Mobile, and this is the startup screen. They're going to click a green button, which is probably already default, and they're going to tap their own QR code. And as they do that, the uh, onboard camera is going to appear uh, on the uh, mobile device, and they simply point their camera at the QR code that is uh, on the projected screen uh, that the computer is projecting. And as soon as they do that, um, they get in. And uh, whether it's a teacher device, which here you're seeing a teacher iPad, Let's say, and the teacher has full control of everything on the computer. Uh, if it's a student, they're going to be put into a, a think of it as a queue, and uh, they will not have access to anything until the teacher gives them control to do either assessments or collaboration or individual control, some of which I'll show you that today. So it's real, real simple. Our engineers have made it real easy to not only connect the devices through you know, signals you are already using in your classroom, your schools, but via the QR code, it's very easy to uh, connect those uh, devices. And it's, it's just really a point and click and you're in. It's really that easy. So uh, that is what you would do uh, to uh, learn more about that. So, so let's start getting into what's new specifically, not only in Mimeo Studio, but also Mimeo Mobile. And again, don't hesitate to throw out any questions you have as we start doing this. And I'm going to demonstrate some of these features also. So you can kind of, if you have Mimeo Studio 11 right now, if you're at your computer, uh, which you are, uh, you could certainly play right along if you'd like. So uh, one thing that teachers really love is being able to import content that they've already created. I'm a big believer in not having to reinvent the wheel if I don't need to. Uh, we're all busy. There's all kinds of things going on. Uh, this ability allows you, if you're a big PowerPoint user, you can use your existing PowerPoints and bring them right in and maintain all of that interactivity and all those different things that you might already have. So. Uh, whether it's hyperlinks or multimedia, uh, it's, it's great. Now, if you don't uh, have that ability, and I mean uh, by this, I mean that uh, in order to do this at this point, uh, you'd have to uh, you'd have to have Windows using PowerPoint 2010 or higher to have this feature. Um, for the Mac users or people uh, for, for the Mac users, I'll say that this functionality is coming uh, very soon. But if you don't have PowerPoint 2010 or higher, you can still import content, and that's always been part of Mimeo Studio. It's just that you're not going to have the flexibility of being able to uh, keep those hyperlinks or keep that multimedia active. It simply, if you will, prints it into the file. All right. So let me actually demonstrate this. And to do this, I'm going to open up a brand new file. So I've just already had a window set up so it wouldn't take very much time. And I'm going to start with some things that you can normally do. Uh, of course, you can import already. Uh, this has all been part of the feature, but I'm just going to segue up to it. You can import your Word files. You can import uh, graphic files, of course, and video files, PDFs, and then PowerPoints. But the new feature with PowerPoint is that you can that uh, you have full ability to do everything that you did before. So I'm going to start small with things that you may already already have done. So I'm going to go up to the Insert menu and File. 
And I'm going to find a folder that has some resources that I, I have already uh, put in here. So I'm going to bring in a Word file that leads me up to, maybe this is part of my lesson, I want my students to do something with Simple Machine. So I'm going to click on this Word file. And it's just a matter of uh, maybe a few seconds, depends on how our connection is here. It's going to actually bring that Word file right in here. So there it is. There's my Word file. Now I can't change anything here, but I have an instantaneous file that I can zoom in on. And I can take a, just a standard Word file and have my students come up to the board. And now they can, they can get in here and they can, they can come up here and, and maybe get interactive and, and put their own things in. So there's so many different things that they can do. You can use the zoom feature to, to zoom in on each one of these and, and uh, do all this kind of stuff. So that's an ability that's really nothing new at all. All right? So with that said, let me create a new page just so I start with a blank slate. Let me now show you, uh, first of all, I'm going to open up PowerPoint just to show you where, where I'm starting. At. So here's my PowerPoint with this lesson. It's a, it's a PowerPoint with uh, six simple machines, and, and I have a variety of things built in here. Uh, there's a web link here on page two. I have uh, a sound clip built in, and I have a little movie clip built in. So I'm, I'm right in PowerPoint right now, okay? So that's, that's what I start with. So I'm going to close that. And so let's say I want to make this a little bit more interactive. So now that you know that you can insert content, I'm going to once again come up here to insert, and I'm going to come up to file, and I'm going to search for that file, and there it is, simple machines. And I'm going to either double click it or click open. And in the same fashion that that Word file uh, loaded, we're simply now importing this file right into Mimeo Studio. So depending on the file, depending on the computer speed, it's going to import. And looky there, I'll let your screen refresh. There's, uh, there's that PowerPoint file. You can tell that I'm still in my Mimeo Studio software. And now I have full access to this. So again, my web link, if I would click there, you'll see that as I move up to there, it turns into a link. So my web links have uh, stayed in place, which uh, that wasn't the case before, and I believe we're the only interactive uh, software that uh, allows this to happen. Uh, I can still, if I, if I found a typo in my text here, I can come in here and change something if I wanted to. Uh, maybe I wanted to make this uh, plural or something. I can definitely move things around. I can move graphics around. So you, you now have the ability to edit those PowerPoint files and, uh, and, ha and have full functionality of that. So um, on the same token, uh, all of the media, multimedia has been retained. So here's the sound clip. You're not going to be able to hear this because because I have my speakers turned off, but I have a little sound clip there that goes along with uh, part of the lesson. But you can definitely see this one. Let me scoot him out of the way a little bit. You can definitely see that this little video on Simple Machines definitely still works. And all the while, I'm right into Mimeo Studio, so I can use all of my, my tools here. I can animate, you know, there's part of the uh, the fulcrum and all these different things that, that are going on. So I have full access, which I typically couldn't do that very easily uh, within PowerPoint. So, you know, Mimeo Studios really can be your one-stop shop for just about everything you have. So that's pretty exciting. If you're if you're uh, if you have other content that you've used, whether Word files or PDFs uh, or PowerPoint, again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And the beautiful thing about the PowerPoint ability is that you can continue to edit those uh, files. So that is the uh, PowerPoint uh, new feature, uh, again, being able to edit uh, what you import. Again, you do have to have uh, Windows PowerPoint 2010 or higher at this point. Uh, Mac version is, is on its way. Uh, you can still import the content. It would just be static if you, if you have a Mac or less than PowerPoint 2010. All right. So there is the PowerPoint level import. Uh, the next new feature I mentioned earlier is the ability to add animations. Now, we all like to engage our kids in different ways and, and try to make it, uh, things a little bit more educational, or hopefully a lot more educational. And animations gives you the ability to do this. So uh, you can add anything that you bring into Menu Studio, whether it's a graphic or text, just about anything. You can now animate that to do a variety of things. So just in general speaking, and I'm, I'm covering this very uh, surface level. Okay, so I do encourage you to check out some of our training options that we'll mention later on as we get into a lot more detail on how to do this and you, and you learn from other teachers using it. So, so let me give you some examples here. Uh, so one of the ways we can do animations, and I have a few just examples built in here, is you can build and make content so it slides in and out by clicking a button. You can have one, and I just have a text box there that's set to slide out when I click this little arrow. So you can hide things off the screen and and have it set so when you click it, it brings it in. There's so many different ways you can make this combination work. You can make things so when you click them, 
um, they fade in or out. So lots of different ways to reveal there. Get anything you bring in. And you can even have a, the ability to have things grow and shrink. So there's the various ways you can do that. So to demonstrate some of this, I thought I would uh, show some actual ways that uh, you know, educators might use this. So uh, let's pretend that I have a lesson here, uh, a little mini lesson, maybe on uh, name the capitals. And as a teacher, I'm setting this up. So I would build in my objective. So I already have a text box here, and I've uh, set it up. But I want to make this so it's not on my screen. I don't want it to clutter my screen up. I want to bring it in when I'm ready. So I'm going to kind of position it where I want it to be positioned. We'll just put it right there for now. And I'm going to select it. And then to make this animation, it's super simple. Uh, if you're a right clicker, you can right click uh, on, the, on the object. And you can come down to Animate. Or you can come up here to Insert and go to Animate. Either way. And then you're going to be given a menu here. So the menu here gives you options of what type of animations you want to have. You can fade in, fade out, and it gives you a little example right there. You can have it slide in from all sorts of places, every side and every corner that you want. And then at the very bottom, uh, well, I guess, so there's our fade in, there's our slide ins and ins and outs, and, uh, or, or none. That's what I'm looking for. So I want to make this guy come from the top right. So I'm going to have it slide from the top right. And you can see the demo there. And then you also have the option of either uh, having it start when you click the object or as soon as the page is entered. So I like to have the control. I'm going to have it so when I click the object. And then you can choose different types of triggers. Now the triggers are going to be this, these little icons that you see there. So the default trigger is going to be just that. It's going to be this, uh, uh, this gray triangle. If you change it to results, it's going to, well, let me just show you. If you change it to results, it's going to automatically build in a graphic that looks like a graph. And that would be ideal if you use things for Mimeo Boat and you, you have a, a graph result put into that. Uh, let me click this and let me show you this animation. So if I click it, it automatically brings it out. And then if I click it again, it goes right back. So uh, it makes it really neat to and, and consistent also as you build your lessons to, uh, to plan things out. So I'm going to right click this and I want to change this. I'm going to go back to animate. And I'm going to make the so you've seen there's the default, there's the uh, result, and then the notes. I like to use the notes feature for objectives. And here's what the here's what that would look like. So it gives you that question mark. So I like to use that for whenever we build our training documents and our training files. We like to use a little question mark pull out for uh, the objective. So there's that. Now you'll notice here that I do have a blue border. So this goes without saying, anytime you have a blue border around things in Menu Studio, that typically means that that's an interactive element. And you may or may not want that blue border. I don't like that blue border uh, to be there. So to get rid of that, you simply select that, and you right click, and you choose lock. Again, I'm covering some, some uh, usages of the uh, software here that you may or may not be trained on. I encourage you to check out our training resources. So once I lock that, it cleans that up a lot. Again, all I have to do is click this and it pops in and out at will. So there's my objective for the day for the less, uh, for students. So students are going to correctly identify the capital of the provided state. So I can pop him back up, get him out of the way. And then here's the other part of my lesson for my students. So here's what they're going to be doing. Uh, verbally or maybe using whiteboards or so many different ways I can do this, I'm going to have students uh, name the capital of these states. So Texas, the capital would, would be Austin, so they could click to reveal. Uh, Kansas, uh, this capital of Kansas is Topeka, so they could click to reveal that. So how that's done is that I have the uh, Idaho State and Boise set up as a teacher to, to build this. So I would have a graphic, graphic outline of uh, Idaho, and I put a text box with uh, the state uh, 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 abbreviation. And then I also had a text box here of the answer. And so all I'm going to do now, once these are in place, is going to make sure that this graphic slides over the answer. And just like I demonstrated before, I'm going to select the, the object that I want to uh, animate. I'm going to either right click or go up to insert and uh, choose animate. So I'm going to right click it, choose animate. And this time I probably want this to fade out when the object is clicked. All right, so you only get on the, when, you, uh, when you do the slide ins and outs, that's the only time you have those triggers. Otherwise, the fade in, fade out, it's just, it's just that animation. So as soon as I click that, I click OK, and there's my blue border. I want that to go away. So if you recall, my good students, I'm going to right click that and choose lock. And now it cleans that right up. And now my students can do this activity 
click that guy, and there it is. And then if I just click these again, it just resets it if I need to do that again for something else. So very useful. So many ways you can use the animation tool. Uh, it's pretty darn exciting. I, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing some ways that teachers use the animation tool and hopefully post those lessons on, on our teacher community, which is menuconnect.com, of course. So that's the animation. And now we're going to get into uh, some of the more some more exciting everything exciting I think but uh, some more exciting features and this is specific to Memia Mobile but also Memia Studio because remember Memia Studio runs everything everything connects uh, via uh, Memia Studio so uh, with Studio 11 you now have the ability to have enhanced collaboration so you now have two very powerful methods to uh, to collaborate with students using again any mobile device that they probably can bring to class whether Apple or Android. Um, so with collaboration, and I'm going to demonstrate some of these also. With collaboration, you can connect up to nine students or nine different student groups, and really that is so you can manage the the uh, the way it's all presented. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in just a second. So uh, the new feature that's built in is called collaborate. Now in our previous version, it was called collaborate also, but that is now referred to as quick collaborate if you're following me. So uh, let me go back to collaborate. So the, the main version of collaborate allows you to deploy all of your existing interactive lessons out to your student devices, up to nine devices at a time. And they have full control over everything in your lesson. They can click on things, they can write, they can move things. That is not something that was possible with our first version of Mini Mobile. Uh, Quick Collaborate is what you would have previously seen. Uh, Quick Collaborate allows you to get that further student engagement by, pro uh, by providing a blank whiteboard, if you will, that students have access to limited tools. They can write, they can highlight, and they can erase. And it gives them basically uh, interactive little whiteboards. And I'll show you examples of those. So the, uh, this feature right here, the ability to push out your interactive lessons, is huge. And, that, and I'll show you an example of that. So, so here's an example. Now, I can only do this via screenshots, because there's not really a, a good way for me to facilitate in a live manner using our webinar. Uh, connecting multiple devices and having that display right. So I've done it with uh, some screenshots. All right, so I'll kind of walk you through this. So um, again, you can connect up to nine students at a time. And the reason that is is because it's, for every device that is connected, it is going to automatically divide your projected surface, your projected whiteboard screen, into that many uh, student groups. So if you, if you have more than nine, it's going to be very difficult to see what's on your screen. Uh, so uh, our engineers have, have you know, they put a, a plan in place to have up to nine students or student groups at this time. So to do this uh, on, my, on my teacher device or using some features within the software, the teacher would simply press the new collaborate button, which you'll see that the button right there tells you that you have the latest version of the software. If you don't have that collaborate button, uh, you know that you don't have Studio 11 installed. So again, none of these features are going to work. Let me preface this. None of these features are going to work unless you have Mimeo Studio 11, but also uh, you have to have the license enabled on your computer to interact with those uh, student devices. So just, just because you have the app installed on all of your student devices doesn't mean it's going, uh, these features are, are going to work. You have to have the license uh, enabled on your teacher computer. So let's say you do. Uh, let me zoom in on the screen. So as soon as I press that button, this is, this is going to be our simulation, if you will of what your projected image on your screen would look like that all the students can see. So you see I would have four devices here set up. And what's great about this, it automatically tells you who is uh, who's doing which uh, device. So those, all the names are automatically up there. Here's an interactive activity. It's one activity, but uh, it has numbers of possibilities because every student can do their own thing. And you can see if this is actually happening live, these students would be uh, engaged in interacting with these lessons simultaneously. There would be four, four different things happening at the same time. So imagine the power of that. They have control over moving every object on here and writing the amounts of uh, the changes they would expect to get, and they can do all that. So let me zoom back out to my, my main presentation. Another great feature with this, guys, is the fact that uh, uh, you'll see that there's these little full screen icons uh, on each student display. So at any time, if you want, you can click on that. And that uh, renders everybody but the student you're wanting to show uh, puts them in a pause state. And now the one student uh, that you're displaying has full control. And, and you can use that student as a whiteboard presentation. At any time as a teacher, you can still write over anything that they're doing. 
you can you know mention, hey, these are ten cents, and these are eleven, or these are one, uh, one cent. You can go through and add these up. So at any time, the student as well as the teacher can continue to interact. But you can full screen a student at a time and uh, have a heyday with that. So just as another example, let me. I have this little movie clip built in here. Let me erase my little rogue marking there. But if this will come across, you're going to see this in process. So I'm going to click play here. Let me zoom in here real quick. Hopefully that refreshes in time. All right. So what this is going to demonstrate, let me bring it back to start since I messed some things up. So uh, once I hit collaborate, which I'm doing right now in this uh, simulation, as soon as I hit the collaborate button, any device that's connected automatically gets divided up on the teacher's screen. And then if, if I had it set up uh, with this movie, uh, you would be able to, every student would have complete control over this activity and starting to move these different instruments into the different columns and, and to do all that. So there's a lot of different things you can do there. So that's the, the ability to do collaborate. Now, quick collaborate is ability, similar ability, but it's with just a whiteboard. And uh, you, you enable that uh, with a similar uh, feature. Uh, on the teacher iPad, you would click on what we call the launch menu. And when you click that, you would uh, see a quick collaborate button. And that instantly turns every device, and they have their own whiteboard screen. As you can see on the graphic here, you can give individual problems in this example to students, and they can each whiteboard those out. And yet again, you can click on the full screen uh, to uh, you know, highlight what one student is doing at a time and help them out. Yet again, it's collaborate, so you can connect up to nine students, so you can have control over that. Again, we've only connected four students in this example. So let me bring up this little video clip. And this is really phenomenal, I think, if you see this in action. And I'm hoping that this is somewhat doing it justice. I know there's a little bit, a bit of a delay in the uh, movie that comes across. So let me click play on here. So the teacher would enable this by clicking on the quick collaborate button right there. And as soon as I do that, again, every device that's connected is, is uh, divided out. And then you can have speed races, uh, as an example, let's say. You can have simultaneous math problems happening. The teacher can, can come in, click on that Zoom button, talk about that problem, uh, go back and present another student. You know, they can annotate over any of these at any time the teacher can. Uh, there's so many different educational ramifications, so lots of ways. So those are the two collaborate features that are possible with using Mimeo Mobile and Mimeo Studio. And then finally, one of the uh, other ideas is the ability to have open response assessments. Now, what I love about uh, the, being able to use assessments with your mobile devices uh, is it integrates many, the Mimeo Vote systems that you already have. So if you already have a Mimeo Vote system, you could do memo, uh, multiple choice as well as true false questions. With mobile devices in, in, intertwined with the system, you now have that same feature multiple choice through false, but you now have the ability to deliver those open response assessments, which I think are ideal, especially with the common core assessments that are coming down. A lot of ways you can practice uh, open response uh, questions for that. So with anything assessment related, you have unlimited numbers of students that you can uh, utilize. So if you have 30 students in your classroom and you have 30 uh, mobile devices, you can do all sorts of assessment possibilities with all of those devices. So let me show you some examples of that. And we have maybe an iPhone here, an iPad, uh, maybe an Android phone. Uh, there are three different options for the, uh, for the open response system. So the first one is an essay. So essay question, here's what it would look like on uh, the question. So state the name and location of, a, of the charges that make up uh, or the parts that make up an atom. And then here's what many students would see on their iPads. So this is the actual question. Let, let it refresh on your screen. You can see that. Uh, this is the actual question that students are answering. So they're typing, uh, typing this along. So as soon as you send these questions out to their devices, a keyboard comes up and they can type their, their questions in. So it gives you a lot of ways. And again, the software will automatically grade these. Or as a teacher, as in most cases, with short answer and essay questions especially, you're probably going to have to go back in and, and, uh, and, and, and look through their responses. Because the software, uh, like any software, can only do so much. Uh, you can do numeric responses. So in this example, if I zoom in on that, it's kind of hard to see. You know, what's the value of pi to the nearest hundredth place? Uh, the students can type in an answer, and then you can set it up also to uh, give instantaneous uh, numbers of students correct or incorrect. And then finally, the short answer. Now, the short answer, what I really like about this is that this 
uh, ability gives you the option of having multiple answers input, up to five. So let's say here's my question as a teacher. This is my question that, that I would put in. Name the first two planets in our solar system. The, the two correct answers would be Mercury and Venus. So I would set that up in advance. I then would send that out to my student devices. And the software is pretty darn smart because here's what it is. So again, the, the students would be reading that question on the screen or maybe on their test. It's going to give them multiple answer blanks to put in those answers. And you can do up to five answers if you choose to. So again, all of this data is automatically collected in the gradebook. So another new feature, I guess it's kind of an implicit change in, in software, is within the Mimeo Studio gradebook, which is installed on your computer when you do install Mimeo Studio, you get these nice new colorful uh, graphic indicators on the number of uh, students that are correct or incorrect. And it also will indicate um, whether it's a numeric response, an essay response, or a short answer response. So uh, again, I'm very much surface coding this, guys. And if you would like to learn a lot more about this, I encourage you to check out our quick learn uh, training sessions, which I'll mention here in a little bit. So as I kind of wrap this part up, Mimeo Mobile gives you a tremendous functionality, tremendous implications in your classroom, not only to engage your students with your mobile devices that you might already have, you have the ability to collaborate in a lot of different ways to get them involved uh, in groups as well as individuals, not only by pushing your interactive lessons you might already have or you can download for free from India Connect, but also just whiteboard screens. Uh, uh, you know, it gives you just another way. One thing I didn't mention about the collaboration and, uh, is the fact that any time you go through that collaboration process, everything that the students have done, writing-wise or activity-wise, as soon as you exit, it's automatically captured into the software. So you can go back to that. You can have students do more with that. You can save those files, print those files. It's really quite phenomenal. And then lastly, you've seen some abilities to do assessment. You can, uh, you know, again, integrate the, uh, the devices you already have. I think Mimeo Mobile really gives you the ability to uh, leverage uh, the technology that you've spent money on and hopefully been trained on on how to, on how to better utilize that in the classroom. So, with that said, we're going to uh, move into uh, a question and answer session here in just a second. Before I do that, uh, let me actually let's just go ahead and I'll, I'll hand it back over to Paget and we'll come back, Paget. So, Paget, I'll let you uh, take it away from there. Great, thank you, Travis. That was an uh, excellent overview of all of the wonderful new features that we have um, in Minio Studio and Minio Mobile. Um, we we got some great questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's super engagement for a Tuesday morning in the middle of December. Um, so I'm just going to take I'm going to go through some of these questions and pose them, and and we'll cover these. And like I said, we will also be recording all of these questions in a document that we will be sending out to you via email from Mimeo. Um, within the next day. Um, so do keep an eye out for an email from us. Um, that will be the recap, the link, and all of the questions answered in writing. Okay, so just to kick off, um, the first question, Travis, is um, what devices can you use with Mimeo Mobile? And do the devices have to be from the same manufacturer when you're using them? Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's a great question. Yep. So devices that you can use again include uh, you know any any devices from the Apple family. Let me fast. Let me go back to my uh, screen that I have here. Let me get that reset here. You can use. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see that visually. So you can use the iPad 2 and higher. You can use the iPad Minis. You can use your iPod Touches, which again have to be fourth generation higher. You can use the iPhone 4 and higher as well as Android devices, again, both tablets and, and uh, mobile phones, they have to be running the Android 3 operating system, which is referred to as Honeycomb, uh, or, or higher. So uh, you can have a mix and match of devices, which makes this an ideal solution for those of you that might have uh, bring your own device initiatives. So you have some students bring an iPod, and some have iPads, and some have uh, Nexus tab tablets uh, and Android, other Android devices. You can bring all those together. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal what you can do. So, uh, or maybe if you have carts of, of mobile devices that you share amongst uh, your classrooms, uh, you can utilize those also. So you can definitely use uh, different devices in the same platform and uh, take care of business that way. So hopefully that addresses that question. Great. Thank you, Travis. Um, 
so the next question that we had were, is uh, whether there are some lessons that are already created uh, that include some of these new features that you went through in the presentation, including the collaboration components and using the mobile devices as part of the instruction. So sure. So indeed, there are. In fact, I'm going to place a link right in the chat window. Um, and in fact, I'll visit there also so you can all see. But if you go, if you go to menuconnect.com and click on collaborate, again, I put that link there in the chat window for you. We have a, a, a team of some teachers that have put together what we call Collaborate to the Core. And these lessons, uh, in fact, let me bring this window over so we can just talk through it. So this Collaborate to the Core, get your screen to refresh. We have lessons that have been developed uh, to focus in on these collaborative activities as well as open response assessments, some sample lessons, if you will. And they, they do span their grade ranges K through 12, and they are available for math, language, arts, science, and social studies. So again, to get these, uh, all you have to do is make sure you're, you are a member of Menu Connect. Um, so you can get the free membership. So click there to register if, you're, if you uh, are not a member. And then you can have uh, full access to these. So once you click on you know, download files, it's going to take you actually to the uh, actual lesson page. It gives you some samples. It gives you some description of what that is. And then once you are logged in, it would have the, uh, let me just log in here real quick. It would give you the ability to um, download these and use them as they are right within the lesson. So, so uh, when we get logged in, you're going to see something else pop up here. So you can see a little bit of onboard training here. So you're going to be able to see uh, the download the lessons. You can download the science pack. You can download every single lesson that we uh, that were put, that was put together. And you can also download a PDF that was prepared to kind of bring the uh, the uh, the educational ramifications of collaboration uh, up front. So definitely check that out. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. Thanks, Travis. That's great. Um, so, one, uh, just sort of following on from all of this, um, one of the questions we had was, what was the cost involved for um, Mimeo Mobile, the app, um, in relation to Mimeo Studio? Do you want to take that? Yeah. So, uh, again, Mimeo Studio, the software, again, which is the application that I've been using, it's, think of it as a, as a is the supreme and all-powerful presentation software that is available for free. Uh, you can download it from uh, the website, memu.com. I'll put that in the chat window. Um, and uh, go over to support and download that. Uh, that gets activated again once you uh, plug in any uh, menu device that you have. You can also evaluate that for 30 days, a full version. Uh, if you want all the features, uh, if you don't have any devices. As far as the Mini Mobile app, there are various classroom, uh, there's various licenses available for that. I believe that the uh, the classroom license um, uh, that enables the features for a teacher computer for any of their student devices. Now remember, one teacher license enables it to be used for every device that comes through that door of that, uh, that teacher. So. The classroom license, I believe, is $199. That's an annual license. Um, there are other licensing options available. So if that is something you would have an interest in, I would definitely uh, contact your salesperson for your region or simply contact training at menu.com, and I'll put that in the chat window there also, and we'll be glad to help you. But there's other licensing schemes, uh, whether it's a site license or district license available for uh, you if you have an interest in that. Great. Thanks, Travis. Um, so some specific questions regarding um, some of the assessment components. Um, we had a question, uh, where are the student responses stored for review later on if needed? Um, and yeah, no, that was the, that was that question. So um, okay. Travis, do you want to take that? Yeah, let me, uh, if I can, let me just demonstrate this real quick. So one of the applications that is installed when you install Menio Studio is Menio Studio Gradebook. And so at any time, whether I'm using the Menio Boat uh, handsets or the Menio, uh, or, or mobile devices with uh, Menio Mobile or a combination, as soon as, uh, as, soon as students uh, you know, press an answer in or complete assessment, all of that data is automatically collected in the gradebook, the Mimeo Studio gradebook. And so you would have set this up previously. You can see I have some sample classes set up, some science classes, and some math classes. Uh, I can click into these, 
and all of that data is automatically collected. So if I if I double click into one of these uh, examples, you know, I can click on a test right here, and you can see all of my students' results that are put in, and I can generate all sorts of reports and all kinds of things. So the general answer to that question is the fact that uh, all of that data is automatically collected in the Memeo Studio Gradebook, which if you have Memeo Studio installed, you also have this installed. It's a green icon right on your desktop. So again, I encourage you to check out our Quick Learn sessions. I'm going to put that link out here in the chat window as Paget asks, asks maybe the next question. Uh, and uh, check that out because we definitely uh, we show you, and these are all free training sessions, we show you how to utilize all of these resources. So there you go. Great. Thank you, Travis. Um, and just, I, I did put the link on the, uh, earlier in the chat um, to, that takes you to the overview page of our training as well. So you can really Perfect. see all of the different online training resources that we've got. But the quick learn training sessions are excellent. And, um, you know, as Travis said, you can access those either on demand or in real time um, with a presenter. So, right, um, and, and with that link that you've prepared, we also have uh, video tutorials that you uh, people can download. They're you know, you know, three to seven minute video tutorials on just about everything in video you can also get. Exactly. So we have a combination of the quick learn sessions, the video tutorials, and obviously these webinars as well. So um, we have a, a, a variety of different types of online training available depending on your your specific needs for your school or district. Um, I was going to ask you another question on a slightly different topic, but I see that, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, we've had a follow-on question from um, Merwin, <laughs> and I'm losing my voice. But, um, his question is, can you elaborate on the collaboration aspects of the mobile application? For example, can I have 27 students collaborating in groups of three for a total of nine groups and maybe up to 36 students in groups of four? So, Travis, basically, how does that work in terms of the groupings and the number in total of collaborative um, sessions that are live? Right. Okay. So, yeah, I think the, the big thing, and that's a great question because, you know, we're always trying to find ways to maximize you know, our technology and resources in our classroom. But the main thing to think about is you can have up to nine mobile devices uh, in the collaborate mode at a time. So nine devices plus the teacher. So the teacher uh, will be added on to that. So nine student devices at a time can collaborate. So in the case where you have 27 students, you could certainly divide them up, as you say, uh, into groups of three um, uh, and have nine groups as well as, uh, you know, higher. So you, could, you can only have those nine devices connected at a time. It won't, and it's the first nine devices that you connect. So. Uh, if you want to have every, let's say if you do have 27 students and you each and you want to have them all individually collaborate, well, there are some workarounds at this point for that where you could, you know, have the first nine students connect and then pass those uh, nine mobile devices around. Uh, or you'd have, you know, the first nine students that, that they could disconnect from the collaborate session and then you'd have the next nine uh, reconnect and uh, and go about that. So I think your grouping there would probably be the best way to do it uh, from a classroom facilitation standpoint. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's how you would do that. Uh, again, the key part is the nine devices, um, whether it's individual students using those or groups of students using those those nine devices. So hopefully uh, that that addresses that question. If not, definitely toss it back out and we can address it. Okay. Um. Thank you, Travis. That's that's a great question. That's one of those questions that um, we get every time. That it's, it's a really interesting concept. So I'm glad you explained that. Um, and then I, I just have two more um, more specific ones. And then unless we get some more, I think I'll ha hand it back over to Travis. But let me just. So the first um, specific question is: Can you lock students out of surfing the internet during the classroom session? So that's, I know that's probably a concern of all educators using mobile devices. Um, Travis, do you want to answer that sure. one? Yep, and again, another valid question, um, you know, from the standpoint of being able to facilitate this technology. And, you know, kids would never do that. They would never do, go someplace you don't want them to go while, while you're teaching. I know that. So, uh, but, uh, there, there's no, there's not, there's not a mechanism in place with the software or the mobile app to do that. Um, and w the reason for that, and I've done a little bit of research on this, is it's really, it's really, uh, uh, it's 
the, the ability to do that is something that is limited by the device that you have itself. So I do know on the uh, on the uh, the iPod, the uh, the iPad platform, there are some. If you if you would Google uh, or search for ways to do that, there are third party ways, and, and there are some different mechanisms that you can actually set your i your iPads up. Let's say to restrict that, but you'd have to go in and, and, and physically go into the settings of each of those iPads to do that. So um, it's really uh, that's the functionality from what I've seen, the functionality of those devices that you have. I, I did a little bit of research also on Android devices. I didn't come across uh, something as easy as it looked like for the uh, the uh, iPads, but uh, uh, you might have to do a little bit of research. But as far as what the, uh, the software enables and all that, um, there, there isn't, there isn't a way to lock that out. So again, I think if, if you don't have the ability to go and, and do that, or, or have the facilities or maybe administrative rights to go and change those settings, uh, if you can, you know, then I think that it's going to have to be, you know, back to the teacher. Um, you know, the, you, get, you got power in the hands of, of students. So I think it also becomes part of the teacher's role to make sure you facilitate, and monitor that, um, and, and and do it that way. I think so. Not, not, not probably a solid answer there, but uh, there is a way, but it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, work on your part. Thanks, Travis. And, and just to follow up on that, as you were talking, Travis, I was thinking, you know, one of the great things about being able to use mobile devices in the classroom is that the teacher's using the mobile device as well as, as his or her tool, which sort of untethers them from the front of the classroom, and they can be um, going throughout the classroom and, and just sort of overseeing what their kids are doing. So exactly. um, that's just exactly. another component of that that I think helps. So, um, and then the last question we had, um, let me just get it up here on the screen. Um, can I convert a gallery file in order to use it with the Mimeo system? Um, Travis, I wasn't 100% sure I understood that question, and neither was Eliza. Does that make sense to you? Um, not, not, not exactly. Let me go back through the chat window and see if I can get the It was from that. Um, uh, Merwin. Merwin. So, and if yeah. you want to re-ask that question or, yeah, or Merwin, I can, again, I'll put the uh, the training link in the, uh, in the email. Uh, yeah. So definitely reach out and I'll address you that way if, if I can. But uh, a, gallery, a gallery file, which we refer to as, as one of those files that uh, the Menu Studio Gallery uses, those are already... Uh, you know, already designed to be used with the Ninja system. If you're if you're trying to bring in a, another gallery, for, let's say another, uh, I guess we'll call it gallery file for maybe another interactive vendor, interactive whiteboard vendor. Those, if that's what you are referring to, those will not be brought in. Um, so I'm not I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. So please, definitely, if you ask that question, uh, send an email, which I get those emails. So send those in to trainingmenu.com, and I'll be glad to, uh, uh, you know. Get you a little bit better answer based on what uh, what you're meaning there. So I apologize. No, that's fine, uh, Travis. I just wasn't okay. sure if I um, didn't quite get it. And um, I think he, oh, like, and I think yeah, I think he kind of provides a little bit more context, which is a lot where where we're going. So yeah, those uh, those other interactive whiteboard lessons, uh, those will not be able to be those gallery files. That's you know, it's a different programming language. Those will not be able to brought, be brought in as that as that uh, type of package. However. Uh, one thing I will mention that's also part of the importability is uh, Mimeo Studio has a great ability to import those other types of files that you might create or have access to uh, for other interactive whiteboard uh, uh, you know, products. So in uh, Merwin, in your case there, if you have some other lessons that you've created in those files that you brought in, those gallery images and stuff, you most likely would be able to import those right into Mimeo Studio and take it from there. So. You would insert those just as we inserted the PowerPoints earlier, or just as we inserted any other type of multimedia by clicking Insert File, and then Import uh, or Insert those those files. So it would all depend on the type of software and the version of software that was uh, was used to make those. So the gallery files themselves, no, those will not import. But you could break those apart, put those into a, a into a uh, file, uh, interactive whiteboard file for your system there, and then bring that bring that in. So there, there could be a workaround for you there. Okay, great. Thanks, Travis. I'm glad we figured that out. Um, I don't have any more questions from the chat window. So, Travis, I'm going to hand it back to you to, to wrap it up with a few more pieces of information for okay. everybody. Thanks. Yes. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us and, and myself, I guess, uh, for this webinar. 
As uh, you may know, if you are a repeat uh, attender to our webinars, we do give the, you give you the ability to earn CEU credits. So I'm going to put a link right there in the chat window. Uh, you should be able to click that and, and put a little bit of information in and uh, go right to um, a form that uh, will allow us to process a certificate that's customized to you. So we'll do that within about 24 hours, uh, and you can do that. So if you can utilize that, perfect. Uh, Paget uh, did mention earlier as well as I did some uh, other options for training, so definitely check those out. We mentioned uh, the variety of video tutorials and reference guides that we have, as well as Quick Learn uh, on demand and, and live Quick Learn, which are taught by live teachers that we have throughout the country that uh, do these hour sessions. Everything is absolutely free to you, and you get the ability to ask questions. Um, and also with these quick learn sessions, the ability to earn those uh, PD points, the CEU credits, if you choose to. So a great resource, uh, especially as we continue to update, update software and the products. It's a great resource to always uh, refresh and and, uh, and learn some of the new things that are going on. So I definitely encourage you to check those out. We usually run those every night of the week, uh, Monday through Thursday, and even some Saturdays. So check those out. And as Padgett mentioned. Uh, we also have the free webinars. Uh, this is a final webinar of the fall season, and be looking for uh, new webinars that you can uh, register for that uh, will be uh, starting up in uh, early, uh, late winter to early spring. So look for those uh, coming out. So uh, there you go. And again, all the all of these uh, webinars remain available on demand. I did also mention a little bit about Menu Connect, uh, so definitely check that out. And, and uh, I'll throw the link in there just to the site one more time. If you are not a member, it's absolutely free. You get tons of free educational created resources. Uh, you know, teacher created, that's what's important. Uh, most of which, or a lot of which, is aligned to those state and common core standards that that applies. Uh, you can search for those and find ways to start. I really love Menu Connect, and I've, I've been involved with Menu Connect probably for the longest uh, since, since uh, uh, as a teacher working with Menu and things like that, and it's phenomenal. The teacher resources you have there, the Ask a Master, you don't have to start from scratch. If you need uh, you know, a quick supplemental lesson or an idea to start with, that's a really great place to go. You can tear it apart and make it your own and have, have a great time with it. So, of course, I'll also present here the, the menu of classroom materials. Everything is, is phenomenal. Uh, you, you may have the interactive teach, but uh, again, without the menu of Studio software, none of this would be possible because it runs everything. One seamless application ties everything together. We did extensively mention also today uh, the menu mobile app and uh, also menu boat assessment, which everything ties right together. So check this out. Check with your local reseller if you would like to find out more about that. So with that said, one more link I'm going to throw you in the chat window, and that would be the link that would allow you to get access to uh, future webinars as well as recordings uh, of these webinars. Uh, so you can register for those and, and watch those previously recorded ones. Uh, as you mentioned early on, we will be sending you an email out within the next oh, 24 or 48 hours that will uh, wrap this webinar up. It will include a recording link as well as a synopsis of all the questions and answers that were asked and as well as a few other links that, that we put in the chat box. So uh, thank you for joining us on this Tuesday morning. I hope that uh, all of you have a happy holiday season. And if there's anything we can do for you, to uh, let us know. So uh, to exit the recording, uh, we can close down and exit the webinar. All I ask you to do when you're ready to leave is to close the window out or go up to the uh, Blackboard Collaborate window, which is over there on the top left, and click File Exit. And when everybody has left the room, I can close the recording up and get that uh, packaged up for all of you. So thank you all, and have a great day.